Hello friends, you're with the Lonesome Gamer and before we continue our historical journey I think it's time for a little recap because we're not gonna now leave this prehistoric era and uh, well we've seen part of the evolution of the surface of the earth itself in erosion We've seen mountains grow and shrink again, supervolcanoes and ice ages. Then we followed the evolution of the dinosaurs and the mammals, and that ended up with the appearance of the first humanoids in North America here. And here we've seen, um, finally, the struggle of man during the last Ice Age, the evolution of language, of, uh, of the first cultural sparks, and uh, yeah, we've seen the first attempts of, of tool use and of uh, domestication actions. So now I guess it's, uh, it's time to move on to the dawn of civilization. And that is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to see civilization by uh, I'm not sure what the what the first name of this guy is McGowan is it Richard I don't know actually yeah a real classic by Avalon Hill and it starts in the in the late stone age we're gonna see some advanced craftsmanship and uh, well the first uh, religious ideas and it's gonna advance to the Iron Age to some amazing developments like philosophy, law, democracy, the things that are still today um, maybe the most important parts of our daily life. In the gaming history, this game is also a, a milestone. There is no doubt about that. It is one of the first real Euros, I think, we can say, and it is possibly also one of the first historical games or the games with a historical theme that uh, that became really wildly popular. Not not a not a pure war game, but you know, a game that really um, appealed to a large audience. And it also introduced uh, quite a bit interesting mechanics that were later um, or that built later the basic for some other very successful games uh, like for example Settlers of Catan. Okay, so let's set up this one. Okay, so the game is set, and uh, you can see we have a pretty big, big map here, and it looks very old-fashioned, I would say. I mean, nobody would sell a map like this uh, today anymore, but I think it's uh, kind of cool, and it brings back some really great memories. Basically, I played this game quite often when I was a child and 
I have only played it very few times since then. So I know that there are many people who are real experts in this game and who have their own strategy with each civilization and uh, I'm not one of these. So I might make a lot of strategic mistakes, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's fine. So <clears throat> we play with six people. You could play with up to seven. Uh, six is the minimum number you need to play on the whole map. Otherwise, um, you would only play on parts of the map, which I don't like, obviously. Um, each player comes with this kind of sheet here. This is a stock with all these little tokens here. These are the cities and the ships. Each player has nine cities available, four ships, and I think about, I'm not sure, 55 or something of these units here. This guy here is the Italian player. This guy is Thrace, the green player. Over here, the brighter green is Crete. We see here Assyria, blue. This color, I don't even know the German word for it, is Babylon and brown is Egypt. Now we don't play with Africa. We don't see Illyria and we don't see Asia. Now that makes it definitely easier for Italy because they have no direct neighbors in that way. Still, uh, they might have to compete with Thrace, which want to go down here. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. Over here, where it's a little darker, we have the archaeological succession table which indicates um, the progress of the different civilizations and also uh, the order in which many things are done. This is here the census that simply indicates the number of units on the board and these are the trading cards here, the goods that you get. Over here we have the, I don't know what the word is, civilization cards or, or whatever. So these are the technologically advances you have um, and you can buy them. Okay. So what's the goal of the game? The goal of the game is simply to <clears throat> Move along this archaeological succession table, it's also called AST, we might use that term from now on. And you can see these small uh, chits here. And each, at the end of each round, these chits will move along one step here on the table. The one who's first here on that finish square wins the game. Now there are here these special, no that's wrong, there are these different colors here, it becomes gray and then brown again. And these are the different ages, so we all start in the new stone age. Then we have here the Early Bronze Age, the Late Bronze Age, Early Iron Age, and the Late Iron Age. And whenever you want to go from one age to another, you have to fulfill certain requirements. 
And if you don't fulfill them, you have to stop. And uh, yeah, you can only move on if you then uh, fulfill these requirements. So that's the reason why some people can be faster at the end of that line than others. Okay, um, so at the beginning each player simply places a single token on the map. And we start over here. Now you, you can flip these token and then these are units. And you start in one of the regions that touch your color here on the edge of the board. So uh, the, the red player can start in either that, this or that region here. And well I guess I'm gonna start here because I want to move down here into Italy. Thrace has only one region where it actually can start. It's this one up here. Crete has only two regions and that's an interesting civilization because they are the seafaring civilization. They have some hard times uh, probably because yeah, there is not so much room there. They have to build ships and that's uh, well, that slows you down quite a bit, especially at the beginning. The Assyrians are over there, and I assume they want to go more in this direction here, and possibly a little bit here. So, I'm going to start here. We have then the Babylonians, which are over here. So, we're going to go right there. Finally, Egypt down here. Well, we could move up to here, but I think for now I'm well, I'm simply going to start here. Does that make sense? Well, nope, I'm going to start there. Okay. So now we're actually ready to go. The game is fairly simple. We have here our sequence of play. The first thing we do is we collect taxation. That means for each city a player controls, he'd have to place one, um, one chit from his stock into his treasury. No one controls any cities, so nothing happens. Then we have the population expansion. And in each area where you have a single unit, you have to place another unit, just like that. If you have two or more units in the same area, you're going to place two additional units there, but never more than two. If there are no more units in your stock, well, then you simply place all that you have, and that's it. There we go. Next we see the census. So that's really easy in this case. We all have to count our units and we obviously have all two units so we mark that just like this. Then we come to the construct ships phase. Well, we could now construct ships, and to do this, you can either spend two bucks from your treasury and then place a ship somewhere, 
on an area that you control, but nobody has any treasury. You could also spend uh, two population markers and then place the ship in that area where you've spent the population markers. But nobody's going to do that because that would bring him basically out of the game right now. Then we come to the movement. And that's something we do now in census order. So that's interesting because that means that the people with the highest population, they have to move first. And the, uh, the people with the lower population have the advantage that they can react to the other's movement. Uh, in this case, when there is a tie, we go again in this archaeological succession table order, so in AST order. So we start again with Italy, and we can now move with a unit simply from one space into an adjacent space. Is it necessary? Well, I think not so much. You can see here that little dot here indicates how many units a, uh, a space can uh, sustain with food. So um, therefore it would be fine if there are two here. But okay, let's spread out and let's move with one unit down here. These guys, they will move in here. <clears throat> Now these guys you know it's that's interesting I mean there is the first decision to make actually we could move more here uh, and go for this region or we could start going moving here where there is this pretty fertile area and then maybe move into this region here but there we might have the first conflict with the Babylonians. In general conflict isn't that good. So um, still that's a very useful area so I might actually say okay I'm, I'm, I'm going for this area on a later time and for now I'm simply moving down here. <clears throat> So then it's the Babylonians and, well, they're simply moving here, I guess. And the Egypt are moving right here. <clears throat> oh, I forgot Crete. Sorry about that. So they move here. Fine. Okay, now we would build conflict. That's not happening because there are no uh, units of uh, different players on the same space. Then we can build cities, which is also not happening. To build a city you have to have a certain amount of units in the same space. And uh, could be either six on a space where we have some of these city spots here. These, these are all city spots and uh, we can build a city there if there are six units there. You can convert them into a city. You can also do it on a space where there is uh, no city spot, but then you have to have 12 units in that space, and then you would convert them into a city. Remove surplus population. That's also not happening, <clears throat> simply because um, each space can sustain, uh, well, at least one unit. As I said, there are these numbers here. So this space, for example, can sustain three units. That one here, one. Can barely read it, but I think it's actually written in there. Yeah, it is. Um, that one, four units. So no problems here. <clears throat> Acquire trade cards. Well. We would now dra uh, draw trade cards for every city we have. We could draw a card, but no one has any cities, so that doesn't happen. Trade, well, we could trade with these trade cards. Nothing happens there. 
acquire civilization cards. That's also not happening because you need trade cards to do that. Resolve Calamitous, also no, not there, and then we alter the AST. So that means we now move all one step on here. So we're now all in the new Stone Age. Okay, that's the end of the first turn, and... Well, you can see here in the first turns not too much happens, so uh, yeah, I might do the next, I don't know, two or three turns off camera, I guess. It's interesting to see that, it's still the, the, the second turn, that Babylonia um, already has made here uh, his claims with uh, two units in this area here against the Assyrians. Um, so we'll see if the Assyrians are willing to risk a conflict here or, or if they simply move down here uh, and maybe here on the Levante. As I said before, conflict is usually not very helpful in this game because uh, the others who are not engaged uh, in the end uh, have an advantage of this. So, Italy or let's say Rome, I kind of like that more. They are expanding down here on the boot and we have here now um, the problem in the, well, Eastern Europe. There is this conflict now with, with uh, Thrace. Not right now, but in general, Thrace is obviously interested in controlling the Balkans here. But Rome is not completely willing to give it up. I mean, they can still move here onto these islands or later on here into Africa, so it's not so important for them uh, to uh, stay in this region, but at least maybe to have some, well, a kind of a defensive position here, so uh, just to make clear, okay, this is my area, just stay away from it and you can, you can spread out in the Balkans, that's fine with me, but I want to keep this space here. The Crete was in the situation that they now had four units on each space, and each space can contain, this space can uh, sustain only two, and that one only three units, so now they're going to move two units here, and then they're going to build a, a city at the end of the turn. Or, not at the end, but later in the turn. And these guys are also, they are willing to move further down, I guess, simply. Maybe that way. These guys can move down here. They might move in here. And they move here. I think that's fine. Um, And now, here's the thing. Babylon and Egypt, they have only one more turn left to fulfill the requirement to enter the Early Bronze Age. They are uh, the first ones who have to do that. And the requirement is they need two cities. So if they don't want to uh, lose a turn here, they should do some planning how that might work out best. But in general, I think it should not be a big problem. So they simply move down here and then possibly move here and these guys might move there. 
yeah, that's... I think that's going to be fine here. Hmm. I hope so. Yeah. So, and then, uh, it's, uh, it's Egypt, so, well, they might move just like this, like that, okay, let me see, then they end up here with four, here two, that allows them to build a city here. And where the, can they build their next city? Well, definitely here. That should be possible. Yeah, okay. So, fine. Um, and then we come to the conflict phase. There is no conflict and we build the first city. Now these are six units. They simply now go back in the stock of Crete and we take a city marker and place it here. Okay, and then we come to the end of the turn, move on here on the AST, and as you can see now, Babylon and Egypt, they have to found now two cities, otherwise they would fall behind a little bit. Actually, I made a mistake. <laughs> After building cities, Crete would have been allowed to acquire a trade card because he now has a city, and for each city you can draw a card. And the cards are numbered from 1 to 9, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And if you have only one city, you simply draw a card from that pile here. And that is ochre. And you want to collect sets of these resources. Because these sets will then uh, allow you to trade them against these civilization cards. And now one is not worth anything, so that's fine. Uh, by the way, what do you need these civilization cards for? Well, you can see here, right before the finish line, you have these points. And you can only enter these spaces, and some uh, civilizations have actually two spaces with numbers. You can only enter these spaces if you have enough uh, points from civilization cards or you can also um, use your treasury and your trade cards to get this uh, number of points here but most of them come from civilization cards okay now actually Crete can collect taxes they can, you get, for, for each city you control, you can place one of these units from the stock in your treasury. If you cannot do that because you don't have enough units in, in the stock, then your cities will revolt and go to other players. So that is something you have to keep in mind, but usually um, that should not be a problem. Then we see again the population expansion, the census, which will be now a little different because Crete has obviously less people, uh, because cities don't count during the census, so Crete will uh, going this time uh, last. Okay, now you can see 
we have even more people now obviously on the board everybody has 16 now except for Creed which has only four and well there is a decision now to make for Creed and it's this ship construction thing if they could now construct a ship but that would cost them two population now if they don't do it they will lose at the end of the turn one population because this space can only sustain three and by the way that's important you cannot uh, be uh, you cannot bring one of your units into the same space as a city that's simply not allowed an enemy unit can enter a city but well, I think you actually can enter the same space as a city but uh, then you will simply die at the end of the turn because uh, yeah, the city basically uh, completely takes all the resources from the space. So that's the idea. I mean, he could, if he doesn't buy a ship but waits a turn, he loses a single, um, a single unit here. But then again, he would collect. He would be able to collect taxes, which go into the treasury. And then he can buy in the next turn, he can simply pay two bucks for the ship and therefore he would have lost only one population unit. If I buy now the ship, I would have paid to pay two. On the other hand, I would be faster if I now buy the ship, I'd be faster by one turn uh, on one of these uh, on one of these islands or here on the in, in Greek and I think that's worth it um, I'm not absolutely sure but I think it is so I'm gonna pay these two and I'm gonna get myself a ship which I have to place here now And then we're going to see the movement again. So now Crete, because of the census here, Crete can move last and the others go again in AST order. So here we have now the situation that there is this threat uh, for the Romans that they might get attacked here from three sides from from the Thracians. Um, so what can I do? Hmm. Well, I could attack this space here. Or I could move up and attack these guys. Maybe it is indeed the best idea to give up this space and simply move down here and attack these guys. Then again, I'm. Hmm. Ah, it's really a tough decision. Okay, so here's the other option, and I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move one guy here. I'm going to move three guys, oh, damn. or one guy here, and I'm going to move these two down here. So I'm, I'm, I'm playing a little more passive here, a little more conservative. And if we see an attack now here, uh, then the Thracians will also take some losses, and then we can do a counterattack uh, in the next turn, I think. Does that make any sense? Hard to tell. Possible. Now, 
think these guys will move down here. Uh, but this space only contains, uh, only sustains one unit. So we're going to move down here just like that. And uh, uh, well, we might actually consider building a city here, I think. Yeah, maybe that makes more sense. So I'm not going to move with these guys down here, but with these guys here. And then we're fine. So Thrace decided not to attack the Romans. In the end, it would probably weaken them both. He preferred to move here more into the south where all these uh, spots for the cities are. And uh, that's where you basically want to be. He could also now uh, build cities, uh, have built cities if he wants to. But, you know, that's the question, if that makes a lot of sense. I mean, you can... If you build cities, you lose population. So therefore, you can hold back a little bit and wait a little bit until you build your first cities and uh, let the population expand a little more. And because Thrace has quite a bit of time, they are one of the, um, of the civilizations that have to fulfill these requirements uh, last. So, uh, therefore, I think they can afford simply uh, spreading out a little longer. Of course, that will uh, give them no trade cards in the next one, in the next one or two turns, but I think, uh, or in this turn, and, but I think it's okay. So then we see Crete, and Crete has now this ship. So... How do you move with a ship? Well, basically you can take, I think, up to four units aboard. Might be five, I'm not sure. Four or five units, I'm going to check that. And you then can move four spaces with the ship, but you cannot move across open sea. So basically these two spaces here and that one up there. Uh, you cannot move across open sea. And by the way, also this one here and that one that's also important until you have astronomy uh, and it's also this one here you cannot cross this area too I guess so now is the question where we want to go we could move into this direction here or we could move in here and Hmm, it's a tough decision. It really is. Well, in the end we want, we want to go in both areas, obviously, but for now... For now I think I'm going to go here, because during the later game it might allow me then to move here onto Sicily and maybe here to to, uh, to Carthage. So we're gonna simply move now one, two spaces. We can leave one guy behind. We can move two more spaces now. So uh, I simply move in here and place that guy here and uh, that's it. I'm not going to move this guy anymore. Uh, basically you can embark and disembark as often as you want as long as you don't have more than the maximum number of units in the boat which is yeah, five I guess and uh, at the end of the turn no unit is allowed to stay in the boat, so they all have to be disembarked.
by then. And by the way, you can also uh, leave the boat, the empty boat, uh, in an area, uh, in an enemy controlled area. That doesn't matter. And you can cross enemy controlled areas with your boat, with a full or empty boat, doesn't matter. You can cross them, that's no problem. Okay, so now <clears throat> the Assyrians. There is now here that, <laughs> that front here between Assyria and Babylon. But I think they can cut a deal and simply say, okay, you know, I'm not disturbing you there. I'm, I'm going to move down here with two guys and maybe with the other two. Ah, but there we're going to see some problems already because if they spread out too much here into the south, Babylon might end up... Uh, With two less, uh, with with yeah, with too little room left uh, for the future. Okay, and now you can actually see uh, the clear advantage of going second, because now Babylon can react to that, and Babylon may now might make a decision. I think they're not gonna build their two cities right away. Um, they don't want to get strangled by the Assyrians, so they're gonna hold back one turn. What they're gonna do instead is they're gonna make an attack here, enter this territory here. And well, let me see. That's not, that doesn't make too much sense, probably. On the other hand, who knows? That's all fine. These guys, they want to move in here. Okay. I wonder if I should leave one behind or not. But I think that's fine like that. <clears throat> and then it's Egypt, and I think they're gonna build their their two cities. They they have enough room there. They're you know they're kind of safe. There is Africa is not in the game. Babylon is over there struggling with the Assyrians. So, uh, they don't have to fight for space that much. They can now easily build a few cities. So, let's see where I want to do that. I think these guys, I want to move in here. And then, well, let's see. Yeah, I think I want to move with these guys, these two, this guy moves there, and just like that. Okay, fine. So, that's the end of the movement phase. And now we actually see the first conflict, and that's going to be here. Now you always have conflict if there are uh, units of two uh, different players in one space and that space cannot sustain all these different units. So what happens is now, conflict is really simple actually, 
the player with the least units or starts to simply remove one piece. So the Syrian player removes one of its units and then the other guy will do it. And they simply continue as long as there are more pieces in the area than the area can sustain. So now the Assyrian player has to remove another piece and now there are three pieces left here. Oh, and by the way, as long as the area cannot sustain them or as long as there's only a units of a single player left. Okay, so now here also the Assyrians have to start to remove their units then one of the Babylonians goes away and now there are actually four units in here and that area can sustain four units so these guys are now absolutely fine there they can coexist there is no problem so there are no more conflicts here and that means now we come to the build cities phase again and well, here we have, I guess, that's Rome, is it? Yeah, there are six, one, two, three, exactly six pieces here. They go back into the stock. And then we're going to place our first Italian city there. And then we're going to see Egypt actually building two cities. So this is the first one here and another one down there. Okay. And now we have to see, well first we have to remove the surplus population and I hope I, hope I didn't make any mistakes here but the uh, from what I see that's not the case so we don't have to remove anybody yeah it looks good and then we have to reduce the unsupported cities so each city now needs to be supported by two units uh, of the player's color if that's not the case you have to remove uh, a city and have to replace them with um, with the number of units that the space where the city was can contain. And, uh, well, then you have to count again if you now can sustain all your cities. And Egypt is just doing fine. They have four people now, so that means they can support their two cities. It doesn't matter where these people are on the map. They can be everywhere. It's just important that they exist. And Crete is also fine. They have two units so they can support their single city. And ships do not count as units. Okay, then we can acquire trade cards now. Uh, we do this, I think, against the archaeological succession table. So the player who is last there return excess whoop, reverse AST order exactly. So that means now that Egypt can draw first and they control two cities. So they can draw one card from the first pile and the top card from the second pile. Okay. So they have Papyrus and Hides. Then we have Crete. They can draw another card here. That's going to be Hides. And finally we have Italy or Rome. And they also draw a card which is Hides. Okay, now we could do the trade, but trading is only possible uh, the minimum number of 
of cards you have to trade with a single trade action would be three. So right now no one has more than two cards so we won't see any trade and uh, yeah the rest doesn't also happen so what happens is we move on here on the AST with all these guys. Syria moves on. Now Babylon doesn't have any cities so they have to stay back but Egypt can actually move on. It might be worth, uh, it might have been worth it for Babylon anyway because you know they can now um, they can now grow a little more and spread out a little more so I think waiting one turn is okay for them and they will be able to build the two cities in the next turn. So as we can see here, Crete and Assyria, they are now the next who need to build cities, uh, to, to, who need two cities to move on. Crete will not be able to do that, um, simply because they only have two people, so they'll end up with four people, which is not enough to build a city. Actually, you need also uh, additional people to sustain your two cities uh, or to, to support your two cities. So that means, um, yeah, they simply can't, uh, can't do it. Um, Syria, well, that could be an interesting question if they want to do it or not. Well, there is this conflict here, but we'll see about that. Okay, so I guess uh, now where well, the first uh, civilization has entered the early Bronze Age, it's a good time to interrupt. Uh, I'm going to load this up and hope to see you on the next video or on lonesomegamer.com. Bye.